Hey guys, it's Anthony Pietrobona here back with another market update. In today's video, we're going to go over where the market went this past week, where we think the market's going in this coming week, and go over the short trade that I got in and got out of in this past week. If you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, you definitely want to hit that subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures, but mainly ES, which is the S&P 500. It's taken me two years to become consistently profitable, taken tons of courses, tons of mentorships, lots of losses along the way, dark periods of times. But in the end, if you keep at it, I believe you can become consistently profitable as well. It's just going to take some time. Before we jump into the charts, if you do appreciate this video, just please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate the support. It lets me know that you like these kind of videos. And if you do like these kind of videos, then I want to know that so I can keep pumping them out for you. You'll see I got out of my short at 4080 on that Thursday. And I'll throw up the picture from Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram and you're only following me on YouTube, definitely go over to my Instagram. It's at Anthony underscore Pietrobono. I post some updates, more frequent updates, the daily updates on my Instagram story. So again, if you want to see daily updates from me, then head over to the Instagram. I got out of the short at 4080. I took a long targeting this high here at 4118 and I got out along at 4120 into Friday and we got a nice NFP hot jobs report. Market pushed up, squeezed out some shorts. Now, what happened in the week was I said previously that we would likely sweep this high and come up. I thought we would ultimately get up to the 4220. So in the last video, I said I was short 4140 and I was looking for an ad at 4220 and targeting a 4020 by the end of May. So we swept the high and because of that, the target went from May 8th to May 22nd, as you see my, my mouse here based on the Dow Theory crash signal. So we did push up and we already took out the high Monday, traded down, FOMC pumped us up a bit. And I added onto the short after FOMC came out. I didn't want to be fully in short uh, right here because I thought there was a, a possibility, like I said in the previous video, that FOMC could spike us all the way up to high 4200s to stop out all shorts before going down. So we couldn't really push up FOMC. We were chopping around. I added short at 4160 and then we traded down and I was targeting these lows. So once we swept this low here at 4070, I saw a bullish divergence developing and I, it was my signal to get out of my short. So I got out of my short at 4080. I went long at 4080 overnight Thursday into Friday morning. Jobs report came out. There was a little bit of a liquidity sweep. We went down a bit, but then we just trended up all day Friday, which was expected because the put to call ratio had spiked. So they needed to stop out more shorts before continuing lower. So we pushed up all day, about 2% up on the day, got to a high of 41.65. So personally, right now, I got in short first at 41.25. On the daily chart, this is very similar to February when we topped out, right? We are having this distribution. We're chop, really chopping around here before we choose a direction. And we, we swept lows and when we got a push up. So basically what I think right now, I think we are right here in the cycle. So I think Monday, February 13th is very close to the equivalent of this Friday, May 5th. I'll go over reasons why. So I think Monday or Tuesday, we can push up and have a candle just like how we had Tuesday, February 14th. That marks the high, basically pointing to us pushing up to about 41.80 on ES, marking the lower high, and then us continuing lower. Before I finish that thought, I want to bring awareness to what's happening this week. We have CPI coming out Wednesday morning. So no news until Wednesday morning, 8.30 a.m. Now, before we continue, CPI last time, wasn't extremely volatile, but the two times before that were wild. Let me show you what happened. So this was CPI, Tuesday, February 14th. We pushed up, made the lower high, and then went down. I think that can happen Wednesday. We push up maybe 4,200 max, and then end the day down on Wednesday. However, let's look back to what happened December 13th. This was CPI. So let's just go to the 15, let's go to the one hour chart and go all the way back to what happened December 13th, 2022. Basically, we uh, put in a top and it looked like that was the top, but then we started to trend down. And then there was a real sneaky push and CPI pushed us from 4050 all the way to 4180. So that was a 125 point spike on CPI to the upside and then just trended down and that marked the high. And then we went from the 4180 high down to a low of 37.80. So we're talking about a 300 point drop from the high, the CPI release high from December 13th to December 22nd. So in less than two weeks, we fell 300 points from the high. 
but we had a 125 point spike sweeping all recent highs to the left before continuing lower. So I'm showing you this scenario because we have CPI coming out Wednesday and this is a, this is a high probability. So I'm personally in half short. I started shorting at 41.25. I had one ad at 41.60. My average right now is about 41.40. And I'm waiting, after already taking profit on the previous short, I'm waiting, I'm not putting in the other half size short because high risk of an over 100 point spike coming, pushing us from say 41.60 to 42.60 before going lower. Another time was, was November. Let's just go back to November. This one was risky, man. November 2022 was right here. So it was November 10th. Now we were trading down into it, but what happened November 10th? We went from 37.50 to 39.70. So that was a 220 point increase from low to high, five and a half percent up on the day. That can blow your account. So again, I'm just showing you this because this is extremely risky to be holding shorts into a CPI release. It's been historically very volatile. So November was an absolute face ripper. December was an absolute face ripper. Not as crazy as November. However, the good news is the put to call ratio was very high going into this release. So they had to stop out shorts. Now, if the put to call ratio isn't very high going into the next release, I think worst case we'll get something like this where we push up 100 points and then sell off. I can stomach 100 point rise, no problem. Something like this where we go up 200 points now that will really hurt my account. And that's why I'll have stops in. But again, you can get slipped on CPI releases and this is just part of the risk. If we trade up Monday or Tuesday, I will be much more comfortable holding the shorts. If we have a really big drop Monday and Tuesday and puts a call ratio spikes and we go into Wednesday, I think there's a very high probability we get a 100 to 200 point spike on the CPI release and then continue lower. But if we trade higher, just a little bit Monday and Tuesday into that 4180, maybe 4,200 area, and then we go into CPI Wednesday, I'll feel a lot more comfortable holding shorts because they're less likely to rip it 200 points to the upside. It may be a 50 point pop and then go to lower, or it'd be just straight shot dump Wednesday and we'll start going lower, making lower highs and lower lows from the Wednesday CPI release. All right, so now that we're aware of the risk that we can have a crazy spike on CPI, let's can move on to more news. On Thursday, we have core PPI and some bank rates uh, with the GBP, then Friday, we have we need to have the consumer sentiment at 10 a.m. and uh, inflation expectations. The big thing that can stop myself out and really cause pain for shorts would be CPI or it can go in our favor. We're going to have to see where that unfolds. But again, huge risk holding shorts into CPI on ES and NASDAQ. NASDAQ tends to rip even more. So that's why I don't trade NASDAQ because NASDAQ will go even more aggressive. You'll see even uh, on November 10th, you see where my mouse is right here. We went up 7.4%. It was an 800 point rip on NASDAQ. So if you just have one contract short on NASDAQ, you could lose $16,000 in the blink of a second on a spike on a CPI release. It's just with one contract short NASDAQ, 16K US loss if you're short into that. But with all that being said, I am leaning towards the CPI release day turning out like a Tuesday, February 14th right here where we get this spike, but we're unable to clear the recent highs. So what would that look like? That would look like Wednesday, push up, we push up to 41.85, unable to go above 42.10. And then we just trend lower and we go towards that 39.80 to 40.20 low by May 22nd. So I'm waiting half size 41.40 short. Again, if we push up on CPI, after CPI, I will add in the rest of my short and target those lows. Let's take a look at the VIX. I like what the VIX did. The VIX is now back testing. So the VIX pushed up, we swept the low, and then boom, boom, pushed up to the upside, and we're now back testing. I think we're just back testing the 16 area on the VIX, and we're gonna push up and make higher highs, continue to 22 in the VIX by the end of May. So this is looking great for what I, what I wanna see. If we take a look over at HYG, which is smart money flow, again, everything is looking great. We broke to the downside Thursday, May 4th, and then pushed up, but we didn't push up much on HYG. So just see the, the current market structure here with HYG. We're really falling down. We broke structure to the downside and we're pushing up for a rebound, but we're not even halfway between the high and the low. We just pushed, if you just look at a fib retracement from the high, yeah, we didn't even get to halfway on the fib retracement from the high in HYG. This is signaling weakness because if you compare that to ES from high to low, we already pushed up to the 618 to 70% from high to low. So 
I like to look for these divergences where if you just look at the chart on S on S and P 500 right now, it looks like it's holding up better than HYG, and that is what I like to see because that means that smart money flow is really weak, really selling off, really selling these rallies. And ES is just being held up by a few stocks because Apple had good earnings. And it means that this will likely follow smart money as we break to the downside. But if you just look at market structure, we have swept this low here and we're pushing up. And I think we're going to find resistance at that 4180 area before continuing lower. Personally, I think Monday, Tuesday, we float up even into Wednesday. We float up to that 4180 area and then maybe CPI is a, is a bad release and we really push down, have a big maybe go up. But then Wednesday, we finish down at the 4080 area. And then I think we continue even lower. And at some point by Friday, uh, I think we sweep this recent low at 4060 and we start seeing the 4050s at some point this week by the end of the week by Friday. That's just what I think. Again, it may not happen like that, but I'm holding for this target at 4020 by the end of May or around May 22nd. So now let's take a look at the dollar because the dollar is starting to cooperate a little. Barely, but it is. So we made this low, we pushed up, and now we have a higher low. We pushed up, broke structure to the upside, and pulled back, and we started rounding, finding this higher low. Look how sneaky this is. This higher low right here, boom, we have a swing low, higher swing low, circling up, and I think we will start pushing on the dollar straight to that 103 area by the end of May. And that will put more pressure on the stock market and push us to 4,000 on S&P 500, and I think NASDAQ will get down to, I have 12,500 written down, this is really aggressive. I'm not as confident in 12,500 because NASDAQ has been holding up a lot more than S&P 500. So I'm looking at these fair value gaps to the downside. Most likely target though, honestly, 12,730 to 12,750. I think this is really gonna get hit at some point in May. However, I'm not in NASDAQ because it can do crazy pushes and uh, cause a lot of pain. So, so I'm not a Nasdaq, but it's holding up stronger than S&P 500 because tech earnings have been good so far, but the banks have been holding S&P 500 back. And because of that, honestly, what could happen is there could be an, another rotation where Nasdaq is weaker in the coming weeks because maybe inflation holds up, maybe CPI holds up, and that indicates that rates need to stay higher for longer, and that causes more pain to tech stocks over the S&P 500 because tech stocks have a lot more pain from higher rates than S&P 500 stocks do. So I would honestly think that we could see NASDAQ start to become weaker than S&P 500 in these coming weeks, but I'm not betting on that. I'm not trading that. I'm trading S&P 500. So again, basically we are 4140 short and I'm waiting till CPI. If I can get an ad at 4180 after CPI, that would bring my average to 4160 and that would basically look like 41.60 short, stop being at 42.60, and then target being at 40.20. After CPI though, once CPI has passed, my stop will move down to 42.10. And you're saying, maybe why are you moving the stop to 42.10? Because CPI is the most volatile wick that can just stop me out. So I need to, I need to hold smaller size so I can hold through that potential drawdown. It, you know, you might look at that as poor risk management, but it's something that happened in the past. It's gonna likely be volatile, so it could wick me out. So what I like to do is to build a position, but hold smaller size than I'd like to through the news. If there's a spike on the news, then I can get in on that ad on the news short and write it down. So that's personally what I'm doing. I don't recommend any of this. Use your own risk management strategies. But again, I am holding short, uh, 4140. I'm looking to add at 4180 after CPI. Once CPI passes, my stop will move to 4210. And then I'm looking at 40-20 as my TP. So this will become almost a three to one risk reward ratio. After already taking profit on my short that I built before at 40-80 and on the long, I went from 40-80 to 40-20. So I took already about 120 points in this, this past week. So first week of May was really good for me because I rode this short down from Tuesday, Wednesday into Thursday. I took the long and then got out at 41-20, starting to build back short because internals are still showing that we want to go to the downside. One last thing I wanted to show was that put to call ratio that we talked about previously. Go over the fear and greed index. And what we're seeing right now is we are still trending up on the put to call ratio. So you see where my mouse is right now. May 5th, we went down a bit to 0.96. 
I said previously, every time the put to call ratio spikes, it makes a new recent high. They want to stop out shorts. And we did that on a Thursday. So serial mouse is right there. Thursday 0.97. That was a new recent high in the put to call ratio. Means people got overly short. So Friday was a big ripper 2%. Put to call ratio fell a bit to 0.96. Means that it's a decent risk reward ratio to start building some shorts again because we may not find an absolute bottom in the stock market before reversal until we get to that 1.1 area on the put to call ratio. That's just one signal to look at. There's a plenty of things like I've gone over pre previously with seeing the dollar bottom and start to turn up. That makes everything look good for me. The VIX bottoming and pushing up, that, that is another signal that's good for me. Seeing the market structure shifted to the downside on the S&P 500, that's good for me. Seeing HYG smart money flow be a lot weaker than the S&P 500, that's good for me. And a few other things that I'm looking at. So I like to take a huge approach where I'm looking at all of these things, all this price action, pairing it all together and starting to build a thesis of why I think the market may trend or push to a certain direction and where they might be targeting. So that's going to conclude this video. You see my thought process of where I think the market's going. I personally believe we are going to drop about 130 points from this past Friday close from 4150 in the next two to three weeks at some point by the end of May. And I think it's going to be rocky on that CPI release where we could have a big spike to stop out shorts one more time before continuing it to the downside. So take a look for my next video coming out Wednesday night or Thursday morning. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.